Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. The state opposition is ramping up its calls for the racing minister to address questions around the resignation of the former TAS Racing CEO. It follows evidence given during a government business scrutiny hearing last week where Madeleine Ogilvy was accused of being untruthful about his departure. If we've got a minister who's prepared to lie about the circumstances of a CEO leaving his position, what else is she going to lie about? The government needs to outline what the redundancy package was here because it, this could be very, very substantial. Uh, I'm advised that uh, the arrangements uh, in place for Mr Erickson are very much in accordance with his conditions of employment. There's nothing unusual about the way they've been deployed. We're confident that Ms Ogilvie has not misled anybody. A state government spokesperson has confirmed Mr Erickson received three months pay in lieu of notice given in line with his contract. Police are appealing for witnesses to a motorbike crash on the East Derwin Highway at Gagebrook on Friday afternoon. Two bikes were travelling at high speed in the area at around 2.30 before the incident took place. Anyone with dash cam footage is also urged to come forward. Tasmanian motorists are being urged to report roadkill using a newly launched app. The register records the location and type of animal with the option to add a photo. It comes as the state enters a danger period for devils on our roads. What we are finding is that we have a peak in roadkill over the summer months. So that usually starts around November and it goes all the way through to March and April. This app uh, puts the tools in the hands of Tasmanians who are out there observing uh, roadkill on our roads. The app can be downloaded from the Department of Natural Resources website. An in-demand statewide surfing school is boasting major benefits in building the confidence of children in Tasmanian waterways. Organisers say it's a good sign awareness is growing in the community as they look to avoid tragedy this summer. Catching waves into the shore, these aspiring surfers were showing off their confidence on the board. <laughs> Learning how to read the ocean in the process, these children are part of the Surf Groms program. All around the state, kids get the opportunity to, to get out into the waves and learn to surf, but also gain a better understanding of water safety and ocean awareness. The important work educating young Tasmanians to know how quickly things can turn south when out in the water. Gain a better understanding of um, you know, the rips and currents, the tides, um, the size of the swells and how they affect the beach. Participation rates continue to grow right across the state in what local parents consider vital training for their kids. Yeah, it's just been really important for her to learn not just how to learn to surf, but just how to uh, be safe in the surf. We've really seen her progress, you know, with her confidence in the water. So, yeah, it's been really good. With the warmer weather finally here, thousands of Tasmanians are expected to take advantage of the state's waterways this summer, making the safety message even more vital. Sadly, 16 people died in local waterways over the recent reporting period. A significant spike on the previous year, up 129%. But there's hope prevention just like this will change those statistics. Common sense. Uh, we all know the rules, look out for each other, uh, enjoy your time uh, on the coast, in the water uh, through this summer, but um, be sensible about it and look out for each other. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. As we heard earlier tonight, the federal government is asking more teenagers to join the country's defence force and these keen Tasmanian cadets could inspire those sitting on the fence. This morning, the cadets participated in a formal parade to mark the end of another successful year of training. Solemn on the surface, but bursting with pride from within, this battalion of 145 army cadets marching to the beat of drums in their graduation parade. It definitely makes you feel proud to be part of the bigger picture, to be able to all march as one together in the same uniform on a parade ground definitely makes you feel great about yourself and about the country that we live in. Some cadets signing up to break down stereotypes. Originally I did it to show some kids that I, girls could do this but 
It has been one of the most amazing things I've done. It has helped my confidence so much. For others, the military mentality is genetic. Jamie's mother and I have both uh, been part-time soldiers for a quite number of decades uh, and um, it's nice to see Jamie. Uh, we're able to support him through it. They've definitely nurtured um, the cadet idea and actually joining Defence, just recently getting accepted into Army Reserves. Their biggest supporters coming out in force. My heart's actually racing. <laughs> I'm so proud of him, yeah. Doing something that he actually is passionate about. Meanwhile, the Duke of Edinburgh banner made its own grand entrance. It has not been paraded in uh, Tasmania uh, since the passing of the uh, late Duke of Edinburgh. I'm really glad that I was able to been trusted with this. The ceremony wraps up another year of hard but rewarding work. The troops now taking a breather before training returns in the new year. <laughs> Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Model aircraft pilots from all corners of the state have taken to the skies above Longford to mark the 75th birthday of the hobby's governing body. For some, it was an opportunity to show off their acrobatic skills, but for others, the event was a way to remember a mate. All eyes turn skyward to celebrate a milestone anniversary. <laughs> The pilots of the Model Aeronautical Association may have high-tech toys these days, but 75 years ago, enthusiasts made do with fewer of the bells and whistles. The early aircraft in, in, in the very early days were rubber-banded powered. Basically, they were made of balsa and tissue paper. Launceston's Phoenix Club co-hosting the event with the East Coast Flyers in a bid to share the love with more than 20 pilots taking wing. We're lucky that we've got a beautiful day to do it with. The perfect conditions allowing these lightweight, vintage-style tomboys powered by minuscule 1.5cc engines to soar, while a remote-controlled helicopter's acrobatics delighted onlookers. You've spent six months in the shed at home building something or other and then bring it out to fly it. It is so rewarding, it is unbelievable. For Kevin, the event is a way to pay tribute to a fallen friend. The pair built and painted the scale model of the 1950s Pitt Special. Today, it took to the skies after four long years. Uh, so this is the first time I've flown it since then. So to bring it out today, a beautiful day like it is, um, yeah, it's pretty special to fly it because it brings it back to memories. Organisers say it's easier than ever to become a model aviator. The things are reasonably priced. They're not as expensive as they were to get into the hobby. And there are many ways to do it. Taking the chance to see the world from a higher plane. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. The Jack Jumpers playoff chances stay alive with a sensational final term helping secure the win against the Brisbane Bullets on the road. But the boys in green started off on the back foot, down by 10, with the Bullets controlling the tempo and the turnovers in the first quarter. By half-time, they clawed back to tie the match. Milton Doyle once again proving his worth as an import, taking home a franchise record of 33 points. While captain Clint Steindl put the pressure on early in his third match of the season, ending the day with 11 points. This is going to be the way they play, at least at home. And teams are going to have to deal with it. Steindl. He's feeling it. He's three from three. They'll now go on to face the Sydney Kings next Sunday. Meanwhile, Tasmanian Holden and Ford fans can still find their favourites at the state's fastest growing motorsport event. A team of mates took out the inaugural Simmons Plain six-hour race, saying it's consistency, not speed, that wins endurance events. It might be the only car in the field that still has a carburetor, but that didn't stop Tool Racing's $900 Dynamo taking out the first ever Simmons Plain six hour. It's not that quick, so if we drive it flat out we can get our time probably quite easily, so we're not having to back off anywhere, we just drive it as fast as we can and stay out of people's way and it seems to do the trick for us. Cars in this unique race can't cost more than $1,000 to buy, making it an easy motorsport to get into, particularly for families. This event's really about family. Um, if you go up the pit lane, you'll see that at least half the teams are family-based teams. Bruce is putting his money where his mouth is, racing on the same team with his sons for the first time. Great fun. There's no other event where Dad and I and my brother could all race together. A demanding track ending their hopes, car number 90 succumbing to wheel bearing failure with just 20 minutes to go in the day. 
Tool Racing racked up its third line honours with a simple strategy. It's about working together, so if we work as a team then we can probably win, but if you're not timing those laps and keeping track of your driver, you're not going to have a chance. That teamwork taking them to an unassailable position, amassing a huge 70-point lead by the end of the day. Annie Green, 7, Tasmania News. And finally tonight, Tasmanian boxer Daniel Hill won his bout against Nathan Watson on the Gold Coast last night. The engine putting on the pressure against his opponent in four of the six rounds before Watson threw the towel in near the end of the fifth round. The win gives Hill a 3-0 and record in boxing. Good evening. A cloudy start about most parts today. Hobart 19, Launceston 28. The high also recorded at Luncheon Hill. Burnie 19 and Devonport 21. Flinders Island 27 today, 26 at King Island, Ooze 24, 23 at Liawini, the Friendly Beaches and Strawn 22, 19 at Grove, Lowhead and St Helens and Mariah Island 18 degrees. On the satellite we can see cloud over much of the state apart from the northeast with patchy cloud. A low to high level cloud band extended over the southern coast of WA, South Australia and all of Tasmania today. Thunderstorms about inland WA, northern Queensland and near Canberra and afternoon convective cloud lay over most interior parts of Queensland and New South Wales. Tomorrow a low is situated to the northeast of Tasmania. A trough extends from this low to another low over northern WA. A high pressure ridge moves over the bight. To the coastal conditions, variable winds 10 to 20 knots in the north and east, south to southeasterly 20 to 30 knots elsewhere, extending to all waters during the day. Winds reach 30 to 40 knots about the central west and northwest in the morning and about the east and northeast from mid afternoon. Seas 2 to 4 metres. A severe weather warning has been issued for the northeast of the state. A gale warning issued for the far northwest coast, east of Flinders Island, the upper east coast and the central west coast. Also a strong wind warning for the Derwent Estuary, Storm Bay, Channel, Central North Coast, Banks Strait and Franklin Sound, the lower east coast, south east coast and the southwest coast. Hobart and Ooze showers 16 degrees tomorrow, Dover 15 and showers, a possible shower in Launceston 19, Devonport a shower or two 21 and 19 for Scottsdale showers there. A shower or two in Burnie 20, 19 at Strawn, a possible shower and Stanley 21 with a shower or two. Showers becoming before becoming windy rather at St Helens tomorrow 18 degrees, 17 at Swansea and 15 for Ross, both expecting showers. The UV is very high tens tomorrow. Light showers about the east on Tuesday fine elsewhere, showers about the west on Wednesday extending statewide in the evening but only lightly about the north. And Thursday fine about the north, showers elsewhere, snow falling to 900 metres in the south. A mostly sunny day in Perth, 30 tomorrow. Showers and windy in Melbourne, 23. And Brisbane, 28. A possible shower there. Right now in Hobart, it's 18 and cloudy. Launceston, 24. Mostly cloudy. And Devonport, 19 and cloudy. And just a reminder to stay safe if you're in those windy areas tomorrow. Good reminder. Thanks for that, Cohen. That's all your news for this Sunday, the 4th of December. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a lovely and safe evening. Good night.